More bad news for the Dallas Cowboys coming out of that week one loss against the Rams. Blake Jarwin, his season is indeed over. The Cowboys have confirmed he suffered a torn ACL. That will end his season, and more importantly for the Cowboys as a team, put them in really bad shape at the tight end position. The Cowboys and, and Steven Jones already said they will look at other options. We'll break down some trade and some free agency possibilities for the Cowboys, but internally on the roster, this is not good. Uh, Dalton Schultz, Blake Bell, Sean McEwen, and also Cole Hicatini on the practice squad who maybe ends up getting the call to the active roster, but I do not have faith in this Cowboys tight end group without Blake Jarwin. Many of you have asked, like, hey, Tom, trade for a tight end number two, and I always said, no, it's fine. Jarwin's there. Don't trade for a tight end unless Blake Jarwin gets hurt. Well, now that might be something the Cowboys have to explore. Dalton Schultz took over for almost all of the snaps once Blake Jarwin went down with that torn ACL. He was not good. One reception, two drops, both of them kind of important ones. One on a second and six. I would have got the Cowboys a first down. He did not reel it in. I don't have much confidence in Dalton Schultz. And guys, I've seen some of you mention, well, what about Blake Bell? He's not that good either. He's another backup caliber tight end. Sean McEwen made the roster as an undrafted free agent this year out of Michigan. Those guys don't really do much for me in terms of faith and confidence in the Dallas Cowboys tight end room. So I think if you're the Cowboys organization, be it in a trade, be it in free agency, you have to go explore other options. I think the Cowboys have to add a tight end right now. We'll discuss some trade targets, some free agent targets. Before we do, though, get your votes in. Do the Cowboys need to add a tight end? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Let's head now to some trade options. I know you guys want O.J. Howard. I know. Cameron Brait, though, is much more attainable and acquirable for the Dallas Cowboys. He is currently tight end three on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers depth chart behind Gronk, behind O.J. Howard. Brake carries a $4.25 million base salary. It's a little bit expensive, but he didn't really get on the field very much for the Bucs in that new offense with Tom Brady at the helm. Brady is your third option. The Bucs want to pay him that much money? I'm not sure they actually do. So here are the week one snap counts for the Bucs against the Saints. Gronk played 77% of the offensive snaps for Tampa. O.J. Howard, 53. Cameron Brate simply played 10 of them, or 10%, I should say, seven total snaps. Most of those coming in the red zone, the Bucs went heavier personnel. I think that's a waste of Cameron Braid's talents. I think he's suddenly going to be that 2016 Braid who had almost 60 catches for nearly 700 yards and eight scores. No, probably not. But could I get around 2017-ish, or maybe a bit above 2019 production? I think that, that you could. So if I'm the Cowboys, I am picking up the phone and going, Tampa, what do you want for Cameron Brait? Now, this might be not enough for Tampa, but here is what I put together, and you guys can get your votes in the comments as to who says no. B for Dallas, T for Tampa. Cowboys, of course, get Cameron Brait. Now, technically speaking, the, bucket, the Cowboys do not have a fifth-round pick, but they're probably going to get a comp pick uh, as a result of the Randall Cobb departure in free agency. So I'll include the asterisk that it has to actually come through with that fifth-round comp pick. But for a tight end number three on your roster, I don't think that's bad value the Bucs would be getting back here. And I don't want to give up a day two pick for a tight end because in theory, it could just be a one-year rental. But a fifth-round pick, well, I mean, the Cowboys haven't had the best fifth-round picks in recent memory. Anyway, I know many of you guys want O.J. Howard, but I think Cam Raid is more gettable. But I will let you guys chime in, factoring in what it would cost to get the player, Cameron Braid would be much cheaper from a draft capital perspective. Type CB for Cameron Brait or type OJ for OJ Howard. Use that promo code COWBOYS125. It'll get you a 125% deposit bonus. Now, the next five, we still have a couple left in terms of the jerseys. We will get you guys hooked up. If you are, have questions or are just unsure, hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. I'll send you guys all the details. 100 bucks though, at chatsports.com slash bet. Using that promo code COWBOYS125, it will get you the 125% deposit bonus, and it'll get you a Cowboys jersey. 
Another trade option here that I wanted to mention was Jay Stern. We're going to think outside the box on this one. Former third-round draft pick. Has not caught a regular season pass. Although he did catch three in the playoffs last year, one of which went for a touchdown. The cheapest in terms of both money, in terms of salary, and I would think draft capital. Because Sternberger, for the Packers in week one, he didn't play very much. Just 12 total snaps. Robert Tanyan actually led the way for Green Bay. Then Mercedes Lewis. And I'm going to throw a partial asterisk here for Josiah DeGara. He is kind of more of an H-back, fullback, tight end hybrid. About half of his snaps actually came in the backfield as that fullback, H-back guy. So Sternberger, in theory, is the future, but he just might not be that good for Green Bay. Maybe you take a flyer on him if he does end up being cheap for the, pa or for the Dallas Cowboys. It's an outside-the-box thought here. He hasn't done much in the NFL. There's no Mike McCarthy connection, but still could fit. All right, some other trade targets I did want to mention here. I think there are problems, of course, with all these guys. Gerald Everett, um, for the Rams, they seem to not want to trade him, but maybe the Cowboys just, just should have kidnapped him. Would have been easier coming out off the loss to the Rams. Tyler Croft, again, a, a veteran option who's a better blocker than he is pass catcher. Jacob Hollister is the most intriguing name of these four because I've seen him play well. But Seattle's had so many injury issues at tight end in the past, they probably want to hold on to those guys. Foster Moreau is stuck as tight end three right now for the Raiders, but I'm not sure they're going to move on from him. And people in the office, I'm not going to name names, Harrison, keep mentioning, well, what about bringing back Jason Witten? Uh, this is about as bad of an idea as bringing back Rico Gathers. I don't want to deal with Witten anymore. It, is, it, it was time to move on. I'm not convinced he's that much better, if at all better, than Dalton Schultz. If you're going to add a tight end, add someone who can do something more than five yards downfield. So I say no, don't bring back Jason Witten. Now, whatever the Cowboys choose to do here, we'll break it down for you. We put out the injury update video on both Leighton Van Der Esch and Blake Jarwin, officially confirmed broke a collarbone, broken collarbone, by the way, for LVE. No one will keep you more updated on the Dallas Cowboys than we will here. So if you haven't already, hit that red button and subscribe to the number one Cowboys YouTube channel. All right, so we went through internal and trades. Let's talk free agent options, and it's not great. Um, Delaney Walker, first up here. Look, he's an older tight end with injury problems, but of the available free agents, I, I think Walker's the best one out there. I, I, maybe you can get a year out of him. I have concerns about his ability to stay healthy, but as a veteran who can offer you a little bit still in the passing game, it is at least mildly intriguing to me. The problem with Walker is the injury concerns, which isn't great if you're already thin at the tight end position. When he's been healthy, he's been very, very good. The problem is the past couple of years, he hasn't been particularly healthy and that's an issue here for the Dallas Cowboys and for Walker. But of the free agents, I think he makes some sense. So get your votes in here. Still a few names I want to go through. Maybe I've mentioned it. Maybe I haven't for you guys. Who do you want the Dallas Cowboys to add at tight end? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section in terms of available options both in free agency and in the trade market or if you want to go internally as well. Let's go down to Jeff Hireman, the uh, free agent tight end, who we've mentioned before on the show, played with Zeke Elliott as a member of the Ohio State Buckeyes way back when. He was actually cut by the Denver Broncos during training camp. Now, he has some starting experience and some production. In terms of the younger guys out there, this isn't that bad. 29 starts for, for Jeff Hireman, 63 catches, 678 yards, five touchdowns. He is not a real down the field threat but he can block a little bit he can he can catch a little bit as well so there is some value there for for Hireman and for the Cowboys I'd explore it I'm just not convinced he's a real upgrade over Dalton Schultz but it does make some sense for the Dallas Cowboys now over to Charles Clay who is the last name we'll really focus in on on here he fits kind of that H-back tight end mold in terms of just like how Delaney Walker did in his prime in, in the NFL his production, though, has significantly decreased over the past couple of years. The injuries have begun to add up. But of the more experienced veteran options, these are kind of your top three guys. Laney Walker, Hireman, Charles Clay. I will make note, 
This move would come after week one, so it would be a vested veteran contract, meaning you would not have to fully guarantee their base salary. Maybe you bring some of these guys in for a workout. You could also look at some other available free agents. Lance Kendricks, Ed Dixon, those guys are unsigned right now. And I will mention three players currently on practice squads around the NFL. Troy Fumagalli, Jordan Tomic, Isaac, or Thomas, and Isaac Nauda. I, I wanted to mention them, but they really don't move the needle. So if you can't already tell, for the Cowboys, I think trade is the better route to go than signing a player to help replace Blake Jarwin. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.